The state began releasing election results again this morning. Rep. Dina Titus continuing to lead the race for House District 1. And Representative Titus joins us now to discuss the results. Of, first of all, Dina, congratulations on your apparent Thank win you. again. Thank you very much. It feels good. It's I good appreciate to all those voters who turned out to support me. Right. It's good to see you. You've been a veteran of many elections. Have you ever seen one quite like this? No, we are in some strange times, as the psychologist mentioned, and now the results may take a week before we know who uh, will actually be declared president. So s oh, sorry. Some, of these other, some of these other races, uh, you know, the, the ones for uh, Congress in uh, the state of Nevada, other ones, any ones that surprise you, uh, Susie Lee, for instance? No, that's a tough district. It's a swing district, uh, but she's ahead, and I think that as the uh, votes come in because of where they are, uh, she'll finish strong and she'll hold that seat. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave and I were talking about this earlier. Our races are so, so close. Curious to know, what does that tell us about our state, about our diversity here? Well, we are certainly pretty evenly divided, but Nevada has a long tradition of winning elections by just a handful of votes. Uh, you've seen that in legislative races over the years, but we've had a high turnout this time. So I think that's encouraging that people were engaged. The fact that the legislature allowed us to vote by mail, vote early, vote with drop off, all that made it so easy and accessible to people that they took advantage of it. Mm. And let's take a look at a couple of the questions on the ballot for Nevada to uh, Representative Titus, uh, especially the one involving uh, the U.S. Uh, the university regents. Uh, were you surprised that that one's being defeated? Well, I was because we've heard for years how the regents act kind of as outlaws, not under the legislative process, and they should go through the usual kind of agency procedures of how to get funding and. Uh, how to follow the rules and the governor's in charge, but I guess people like those independent regions. All right, for your next term, uh, Congresswoman, uh, what do you hope to do? Are you going to get yourself on any new committees or what's your new thrust? Well, I'm on transportation and infrastructure. That's very important for Nevada because it creates jobs, plus we import everything we have here. And we're trying to get an interstate highway built between here and Phoenix. We're the only two metropolitan areas in the country that aren't linked by an interstate. I'm on foreign affairs. That's important because we're an international city, both in terms of my constituents who live here and then the people from all around the world who visit here. Mm. But my main priority is to help us get through this virus and get our economy back on track. So speaking to that, it's the last question, and that's uh, the availability of that, uh, the viability of that railroad uh, between Vegas and Southern California. Is that, is that frustrating to you that we've heard so many propositions for that over the years and now the newest one seems to be uh, struggling too? It certainly is. You know, I served on the governor's speed train commission for many years and we've been working on all kind of different versions of that train and I th still think it would be a great way to link us with Southern California. But now they haven't been able to sell the bonds during this tough economic time so they're going to step back and try it again when the economy turns around. I hope they'll be successful. And if we can get some federal funding to back it up, I would certainly support that. Okay, we're depending on you for that. Thank you very <laughs> much, Congresswoman Titus, for joining us today uh, from District 1. We appreciate your uh, look at things. Thank you for having me.